Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. With the major update that was just released, we've just got a bunch of new mechanics and components here in game. Now in this video, I'm going to go over and show you how you can build a nuclear reactor to go and power a steam engine here in game. We're going to go over all the different components, tell you what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and explain a little bit more of the mechanics and how they all work together. And hopefully by the end, have a completely working engine that is going to be powered by a nuclear reactor. So that all said, let's jump straight into the workbench and let's get started. So now that we're in our workbench, the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our inventory and we want to find our steam power section. Now inside here, we've got all the new components from the major update. And we want to start by actually building our reactor first. That's what's going to be producing heat in turn, going and powering all of our steam components. So to build our reactor, we can use three different components. We can use the control rod, we can use the fuel assembly, and we can also use the fuel rod. Now the fuel rod is designed to be inserted into the fuel assembly. As soon as it is inserted, it starts that vision process and starts producing heat. Okay, so we're going to start with the fuel assembly. Now it's up to you on how many of these you use. For our example, we're going to be using 10 fuel rods and 10 assemblies. Hopefully that will be enough to power our reactor. Once again, your mileage might vary depending on the size and how much fluid you have inside it. So once we've got that, the next thing of course we're going to need is going to be the fuel rod itself. Now with the fuel rod, you'll notice I can't actually place it inside here. It won't let me do that. That's because we have to manually insert it into the assembly. Now you can do that a number of different ways. For our tutorial right now in our little video, we're just going to be using a simple track based system, linear track based system to go and use gravity to go and drop it down into this. So to do that, we can just build this little support structure, go and find a linear track simply by scrolling up and you can see we can find the track base, place that down somewhere on here. Once again, we're going to be using gravity and now we can just create a simple little platform here at the top where we're going to connect our fuel rods to it. So hopefully now when we spawn this in, that will use gravity to go and drop down. Don't forget to put the extension pieces for it to go and slide along. Okay, great. Once we've got that, we can now go and get the actual fuel rods. So we're going to go and grab them. Now you'll notice with the fuel rods, there's two different ends to them. Okay, you will notice if I place it just over here, they have two different ends to them. You can see one end has got that little round piece to it and the other end is a square. You'll notice that the assembly has got that little round piece right at the bottom. So you want to make sure that round piece is facing towards the assembly like this. Okay, you can see there we go. We've got that little round piece. So we're going to go and add a few more of these fuel rods. There we go. We've got five on either side. So that's 10. And it hopefully will use gravity to go and drop it into that assembly. Now, once it goes and drops, it's going to start the whole fission process, the reaction, and it's going to start creating heat. Now we need something to obviously transfer that heat to, and that's what we're going to be using fluid for. Now I'm going to create a nice little enclosed space here where we're going to have all of our fluid. So I'm just going to create a very simple little enclosed space here. And then once we've closed, done the enclosed space, we can then fill it hopefully with some water. Okay, so you can see how I'm just closing off this area. Make sure it's completely closed. We don't want any radiation or any anything to leak out of here. And for the front part, I'm just going to go and use some windows so we can actually see inside there and see what's going on. Great, so now that we've got our reactor and you can see I've closed it off completely, there are no empty holes with that. We now need to actually spawn some water in there. Okay, so to do that, we're just going to go and use a fluid spawner. Okay, that will allow us to go and add that in, toggle it, and then as soon as our creation spawns in, hopefully this entire space is going to be filled with water, for example. That will then use the heat produced from the fuel rod and the assembly and transfer it to the water. Now, as the water heats up, that's what we're going to be using to transfer that into a boiler, okay, because we can heat up the boiler and produce steam, and steam what's going to control our turbine. Okay, so we're going to go and find a boiler and we're going to add that on to the rear of our creation just over here. We can add it on to the side. It is completely up to you on where you want to add this. Now, to get the liquid from our actual reactor into 
our little boiler, we're going to need some pipes. So you can see I'm just going to go and put some pipes here. And on the other side, we can go and put some fluid ports. That way we can get the fluid in and we can get the fluid out. Now, with that, the fluid is not just magically going to move from here into our actual boiler. We need some way of transferring that fluid. And I'm actually going to be using a pump for that example. Okay, so I'm simply just going to get a pump. It doesn't matter which direction you put it because fluid ports work in both directions. Same as the steam boiler, it doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, so I'm simply just going to go and place it down over here. Now, because we're using an electrical pump, we will need a battery, of course, to power that little pump. And we're also going to need some way of turning it on. So for our example, we're going to be using a constant on signal. And I'm going to place that on. Make sure I connect it up. So I turn that pump on and also I give it some electricity. So now that we've got hot water or hot liquid going into our boiler, it should start producing steam. But for it to produce steam, it actually is going to need some liquid. Okay, so you can see here we've got water in. So to do that, we're just going to be using a tank to give it some liquid. Okay, so we're going to place the tank somewhere on the side over here. There we go. Perfect. Once we've got that in, we can connect it up using some pipes. So just very basically like that. And make sure you click on that and change it to water. Okay, the boiler uses water. So make sure it's set to water over here. Once we've got that, we now are getting steam out. Now the steam out can be used by a turbine to produce torque here in game. So we're going to go and add a turbine on. Now which direction and how you place it is completely up to you. Okay, you'll see that when we place the turbine, we actually have two outputs for torque. Now you can connect a generator, a propeller, a train tracks, whatever you want to the steam turbine. Okay, for example, let's connect a generator and let's maybe connect our propeller so at least we can see it actually working. Okay, so something like that. Let's add a propeller on. There we go, and we can add that on the end there. Great. So now that we have that, we need to make sure that we connect our boiler up over to our actual turbine. And you should notice that on our boiler, we have got steam out and on our turbine, we have got steam in. Okay, so as it produces steam in the boiler, it's transferring it into the turbine, then producing torque. And now we've got any steam out coming from the last part. Now we could add just a simple fluid port here, which means that your pressure or your steam is then gonna just come out of your turbine. The problem is once you run out of fluid, you can't produce any more steam. So we want some way of producing or converting that steam back into water or fluid that we can use in our boiler. And that's where we can use a condenser. Okay, that's one of the new components that we have with this update. So you'll notice that when I place the condenser down, we've got two ports at the top and we've got two on the side, one for steam in and one for water out. So you'll notice that as I place that in, there's steam in. So we're gonna take the steam from our turbine and we're gonna put directly into our condenser. The condenser will then use its power to go and convert that back into liquid, as you can see, water out. So we're going to use that and we can connect it over to our little tank that we have just over here. We're gonna connect all those pipes up, make sure everything's in line here, just like this. Very simple, and there we go. Now, the condenser just doesn't magically convert things. It needs to go through a radiator to cool it down, okay, to have that whole process. So we're just gonna go and add a radiator on. Once again, how many you add or how big the radiator is, completely up to you and will vary depending on how much pressure and how much steam you are hoping to actually transfer here. So we're gonna connect it once again, just with some simple pipes, very basic here. And one thing you wanna make sure that you also do once you have connected these pipes is you want to make sure that you have gone and connected electricity and a on switch to that radiator because this is a one with fans, which means it needs electricity and also needs an option to turn those fans on. Okay, cool. Now we have a completely closed loop system. Let's go through it again. So we have our reactor. Our rods are gonna get inserted into the assemblies, which is going to then produce heat. It's gonna transfer that heat onto the fluid that's inside here. We're then gonna transfer it into our boiler using these pumps and these pipes. The boiler is then going to heat up, use any fluid that it has here, and it's gonna produce steam. The steam's then gonna go into our turbine, give us torque, 
and then the rest of the steam is going to come back out into the condenser, get cooled down by the radiator, and then come out as water again back into our tank, and then repeat that entire process all over again. Okay, which is really cool. Now, with the nuclear reactors, we want to make sure that we watch the temperature. Okay, we don't want the temperature to get too high. From my testing, around 1,500, around 1,500 degrees, that's when you will have a meltdown and you will have a reaction process where it possibly will explode. Okay, which we want to avoid at all costs. So I'm adding a simple dial over here, and we're going to go and keep an eye on the temperature. Okay, so we're going to do reactor. Perfect, and we can connect that up to one of the fuel rods. Now you'll notice that with the fuel rod assemblies, they actually do have a release button on them, meaning that you can release or eject those fuel rods that you've used or spent and they're empty, and you can put some new ones in. Of course, that will need to be some type of process of mechanical force and logic to get that done for you. We're not gonna be covering that in this video. It's great. So now that we have all of that done, it's all connected. In theory, we should be able to go and spawn that in. We should be able to hear that click, which means that we are starting the fission process. And in theory, our temperatures should be increasing. And you can see the reactor is increasing. Let's go and check to make sure that we are actually transferring fluid. There we go. You can see we are transferring fluid between the two here, which is perfect. Let's go and keep an eye on the reactor and keep an eye on that temperature. And hopefully, it should get quite nice and hot, and once it gets hot, it will transfer its heat over into our boiler, which will then produce steam for our turbine. So you can see the temperatures going up, going up and going up, and it's going to keep on snow rocketing. And that's a problem because we don't want this to get too hot. If it gets too hot, we'll cause a nuclear meltdown, and that won't be good for us. Possibly we'll leak radiation, get sick, our character will die, this whole area you won't be able to use. So you can get the temperature going really quick and it's gonna it's gonna get a meltdown, as I said, around 1,500. So we don't want that. So we want some way of controlling that temperature. Okay, and that's what you can use the control rods for. If you go and find them over here, we have the control rods. Now with the control rods, they have an option for you to choose how much you want to insert them and take them out okay the more you insert them the less reaction you're going to get from the rods okay which means less heat obviously if you go and do the opposite then you're going to get more heat now once again up to you on how many you want to use just be aware that you do need to place them adjacent to your actual rods themselves so i'm going to just go and create a little bit of a base here like that and now we can go and get our control rods as it up to you on how many of these use i'm going to use four for my example right now I said, up to you on how many you want to use. And there you go, you can see we've got four. Now we need some way of controlling the insertion rate of those. So for starters now, let's start with just a small keypad and we're going to manually control that, okay? So we'll make sure we connect that over to our control rods and we connect some electricity over to our keypad, okay? Spawn that in again, temperature should still increase just like before, but now we can increase the insertion target of those control rods to either slow down the process or increase the process by removing the actual control rods. Cool, this is going up quite a lot. So let's try and slow it down. So we're gonna come here, let's do 0.5 to start with. That should slow down now, hopefully. Look at that, see there? 200, 300, look it's slowing down. Will it go negative, will it start going down maybe? That actually looks yeah, that actually looks pretty good. I think it, I think it's going to slow down and it's going to maybe go backwards in a few seconds. But that's almost perfect. Okay. Once again, your mileage might vary depending on how many of these you're using, how many rods you're using, and you can see it's starting to drop. So we might want like four or five here, and we can see what that works like. Okay, that looks okay actually, and we should actually be getting a temperature up. Yeah, we do. Now. You can actually automate this process using some simple logic here in Stormworks. Now, to do that, there's a multitude of different ways. You can use PIDs, you could use function blocks, you could use throttles, whatever you want. For our example, we're going to get rid of that keypad and we're going to just use a simple function block, okay? So we're going to put a function block on here and what we're going to do is we're going to tell that function block, hey, I want you to keep an eye on the temperature here. So please read that temperature in X. And then once we've got X, I want you to keep on monitoring that. And if the temperature goes up, I want you to insert the rod a little bit further and a little bit further. 
Now, a great ratio here would be like anything from 300 maybe to 600. Once again, it depends on your own build and how many control rods you're using and how many fuel rods you're using. Let's take a guess and let's do 550 for our example. Okay, so we're taking the temperature divided by 550 and that's what's controlling our insertion target of our control rods. Okay, so let's see if that works. We might increase or decrease this amount here. Okay, for example, if it's not cooling it enough, we can decrease it. Okay, if to like 450. If it's cooling it way too much, then we can increase it to like 650 or 750. Once again, up to you on how you wanna work with this. Great, I'm happy with that. So let's go and spawn in. And hopefully, as our temperature increases, like here, we can check on our function block and you can see temperature is 10, we're inserting 0.02. If the temperature goes up to more, it inserts it more and more and more. So hopefully that should now go and control it. So let's give it a few seconds just to wait for our reactor to build up some temperature here. So you can see our reactor is building up its temperature and we should also notice that our boiler is increasing its temperature also, which is absolutely perfect. And hopefully our insertion targets and there we go. So you can see currently we're on 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and that's getting close to what we were doing manually. Remember manually we were doing, I think, 0 0.45 and our temperature was around 200, 300 degrees. So that's almost getting perfect and it's automating that entire process, which means in theory, we could just walk away and come back and this won't have a meltdown, hopefully. Great, and you can see it's now starting to normalize its temperature, which 250 degrees, is perfectly fine for us. That's more than enough to power this boiler. If we had more boilers, then we might want a higher temperature inside our reactor. Once again, that can vary depending on your own situation. But I'm happy with 250 degrees to power this boiler, getting enough pressure out of it once it gets up to our temperature, which will be around 100 degrees when it starts creating actual steam, okay, which is really cool. So guys, that's pretty much about it for this little build, I've had a lot of fun with it and I can't wait to play around with some more things and do some more builds with these reactors. As I said, you don't have to build it like this. This is just one way of doing it. You could build it in so many different configurations. And that's the whole really cool thing about this is it's completely modular, which means you can build it to however you want. As long as you make sure you cool it, use control rods, that's all you need to make sure you do. So guys, hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you have, smash that like button. I will be doing some more videos on the Steam and also on the nuclear mechanics that we've just gotten here with this major update. So if you don't wanna miss those videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also that little bell icon to be notified as soon as those videos get posted. Until the next one, we will see you then.